In this lesson, we're going to take a look at form tools in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in. And uh, today we're going to get into something that's a little bit different that you don't find in a whole lot of parametric CAD programs. And that's something called forms. Now Fusion 360 has a lot of different styles of modeling. You've got your solid modeling and your surface modeling. You've got sheet metal tools. There are also several different things that we can do such as primitives where we can create uh, basic shapes out of some predefined uh, shape definitions. But really what we want to focus on is something called forms. Now in the CAD modeling world there are lots of programs that do this sub D or subdivided type modeling. These are things like Blender or Maya, 3D Studio, programs that are typically more for animations or video game modeling, those kinds of things. But Fusion 360 has this create form workspace that we can dive into and create these class A sort of organic shapes quickly and easily and then bring them back into this design workspace and continue parametric modeling with traditional Boolean type features such as uh, adding holes or using combine or join or any of these other tools that we have access to. So to get started we're going to use this create form button and you can find this on the drop down here or it's on the toolbar by default. So we're going to go ahead and select that and this brings us into this area where we have these form tools. Now, if you've been around Fusion for a while and this isn't new to you, this has gone through a couple different name changes over the years. Uh, for a while it was called Sculpt and in a few areas it had its own workspace but right now it's in the design workspace and you get access to it by creating that form. Now there's also another type of modeling that we have access to when we're back in the design workspace. It's, uh, it deals with mesh bodies and we're not really going to get into that in this series. It's something that we'll have to talk about in the future but I did want to make sure that I at least explored this workspace so you have an understanding of first off what that button is, what it does, and you can explore this type of modeling. This is extremely helpful for people coming from a different type of 3D modeling. Like I said, Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya or 3D Studio or anything like that. Or even if you've come from another CAD package like SolidWorks. Um, the, the functionality in these forms is actually T-splines, which years ago was built into SolidWorks as an add-in. You can also get power surfacing for SOLIDWORKS and there's again these add-ins for many different companies. So what we really want to focus on here is some of the very basics. How do we create these forms? How do we manipulate them? What sorts of tools do we have access to? So when we go to the create dropdown we'll notice a few things here. First, the first option at the top is create sketch. So we can use sketches to help define these forms with things like extrudes or revolves or sweeps or lofts. There are also other options for these primitives, boxes and cylinders and spheres. And the different shapes, at least the different starting shapes, are used for different types of models. They have benefits to each of them and they also have some drawbacks. If we take a look at a cylinder, uh, traditionally the way that the faces terminate on the top is going to be a little bit trickier to work with if you want to create a closed solid volume. Where we have a box or a sphere, these are going to be probably the most common starting points. So to get started, we're going to be looking at the box primitive. And the way we go about this is we first need to select a plane or a planar face. Then we need to draw a rectangle. And this can be a center point or a two point rectangle and I'm going to use the center option and simply drag it out. You don't have to worry too much about applying dimensions here but we're going to left click to create this and then we have this box dialog. One very important note when working in Fusion 360 is do not hit that enter key until you're sure of what you're creating. So for example you can see this dialog box for the height of the box is currently highlighted. It's at 42.334 millimeters. If I were to enter 50, without hitting enter, it automatically changes the dimension of that shape. However, if I were to hit the enter or return key, if you're working on a, a Mac, then it's going to, to simply OK or end this dialog box and we can't get back to this. 
When we're working in forms, there's no history that's captured here. This is a direct modeling approach. So make sure that you're completely okay with these dimensions. So in this case, I'm gonna put 80 millimeters in for the width and 150 in for the length. These numbers don't really matter because we can make adjustments on the fly, but this is a good starting point. The number of faces is going to determine how many divisions we have here. Again, this can be done manually, or we can actually grab these manipulators and we can drag them to increase or decrease the number of faces. This can be done in all three directions, a length, width, and height. And at the bottom, you can see we can change this to symmetric or one way, and then we also have some symmetry options. For example, if we wanted the top and the bottom to be the same, we would activate the height symmetry. If we wanted the width to be the same, we'd activate that, and then also the length. Now keep in mind if the number of divisions is odd, for example, if the length is three, and we try to use this option, notice that it doesn't really work the same. It's not giving us that same length division. But if we have four there, then we'll get the green line in the middle. Also, keep in mind that we can add or remove symmetry after we create this box, so it's not critical that it's done at this stage. There are operation options in some cases, but for what we're doing here, we're gonna be creating a new body. So we'll say okay, and this will get us started with our form. Now again, the form modeling approach is a direct modeling approach. We're not capturing any history. We wanna make sure that we understand everything that we do here is destructive. We have undo and redo, so we can make changes and we can go back, but we're not gonna be able to capture any of the features that we use as a point in the timeline to go back to. So from here, we have this shape on the screen, we can rotate it around, and we can see that it's got these smooth edges. But ultimately, what we're dealing with is if, if we go to utilities and display mode, and we take a look at this control frame view. We're dealing with this box on the outside, and then we're dealing with the resultant shape based on the math behind each of these on the inside. This can be displayed as a box, it can be displayed as smooth, or we can go somewhere in between. As we get deeper into design series where we require this type of modeling, you'll be going back and forth between the box and smooth display quite a bit, and there are shortcut keys Alt plus 1 on the keyboard and Alt plus 3. Now these are two shortcut keys that I use quite a bit when doing this type of modeling. Next we want to talk about the modify dropdown. There are a lot of different features here that you don't see anywhere else. We've got edit form, which is gonna be the go-to for changing or manipulating the shape, and we'll get to that in just a second. But I wanna take a peek at some of these others. Inserting edges or points, subdividing the model, which will increase the number of faces that we're dealing with, merging edges or bridging between two selections, filling holes, erase and fill, which is extremely handy, especially if we're dealing with models that have this type of geometry with struts or bridges, and this is something you typically see when you're working in generative designs. We can weld vertices or unweld them. We've got creasing and uncreasing and beveling. And these are, again, all things that'll come into play when you start to work on these types of designs. But to get started, let's use Edit Form and take a look at the dialog box before we make any selections. We'll need to make a selection of either a vertex or a group of vertices an edge or a group of edges, or a face or group of faces. And each of those can be manipulated in certain ways. We have a transform mode option that's set to multi by default. If we make a selection, such as this vertex here, this multi allows us to transform or translate that point. It allows us to rotate, which in this case with a single vertex is not gonna do anything. And then we have the scale option. To see how these really work, let's go ahead and let's select a couple faces by holding down the control key. Once we let go of the control key, you'll notice that we have this multi manipulator. And again, we can pull these faces. We can use the option to rotate them or we can scale them. Now, as we're looking at this, the scaling can happen in all three directions, X, Y, and Z. We can have it happen on plane for moving or scaling, or we can happen in just a single direction, in this case, the Y axis. We can change the transform mode to be just translation, just rotation, or just scaling. So if you have trouble with this multi-manipulator, 
and you really want to focus in on just a certain type, you can go ahead and change that. Also note that we have some coordinate space options which allow us to determine the way that the coordinate system is going to interact with the model. For example, view space is based on the screen, the selection space is based on the first selection, and then the local per entity, you'll notice that it moves to the middle of that entity, and it's based on the normal direction. I'm going to keep this as world space for now. Lastly, the selection filter here lets us just focus on things like vertices, edges, or faces, or again, we have the all option, and then we can select by bodies. So if you want to make changes to an entire body, such as scaling or moving the entire thing, you can use this option and it makes it very quick and easy for us to simply move the entire body around. Now that we know how to select things, let's make some adjustments to this and talk about one last option that I want to focus on in here. So again, I'm going to select these four end faces by holding down the control key. And again, I'm going to be moving them. One incredibly important feature that you can use inside of edit form is the ability to extrude these faces. So I'm going to hold down the alt key on the keyboard and unfortunately we need to use a shortcut key for this and once we're holding down the alt key we can then pull this out and what we've done is we've increased the number of loops or edges connected to that face. For example if I select just this one face and I hold down alt and pull it out you can see that we've created this additional loop here. Every time we let go and reselect the Alt key, we're going to be creating a new extrusion. And each time we do that, we can make a rotation, a translation, or a scale as needed. Hold down the Alt key, and we can do it again. So again, this is a great option, especially when you're trying to create a new design. I'm going to OK the edit form. I'm going to select this end face, and then I'm going to go to Modify and Delete, or hit Delete on the keyboard. I've turned this closed volume into an open volume, so now when I finish, it'll create a surface body back in the design workspace. But I wanted to do this because with Edit Form, we can double click on this edge to select the loop, we can hold down the Alt key, and then we can simply extrude this edge. And again, we can scale this in and out, we can rotate it if we need to, and then hold down the Alt key and again make another extrusion. So if you're starting to design geometry that requires the use of a base shape such as this box, but you really need to add more to the design, the extrude option inside Edit Form is a very quick and easy option. As we're taking a look at this, I want to go into Modify and select the Fill Hole option, and notice that we can simply fill that back in. We can use a creased edge option directly inside here if we want to come back and do something like create a shell or a thin wall body. From here, I'm not going to explore any other modify tools because this is really just a basic introductory look at forms. I just want to make sure that everybody understands what they are. And later on, we'll be doing a design series that's focused specifically on how to use these tools to create all sorts of things. But for right now, let's select Finish Form. And inside of the design workspace, I'm going to use Inspect, Section Analysis, and then I'm going to select the default YZ plane and use the manipulator on the screen to drag this out to show that this entire thing is a solid body. We can then go to Modify, select Shell, and select this end face and pick a small value, in this case 2 millimeters, and say OK. So now we have this quickly created organic freeform shape and we turned it into a thin wall solid body very quickly and easily with just a few simple tools. I'm not going to be saving this design because we really don't need to do anything else with it. So I'm going to deselect the section view to make sure I can see the entire design. And if you want to continue to play around with this or make any adjustments, you can look at the timeline. You can right click or double click and edit that form. You can come back in and make any adjustments using these tools such as Edit Form. Let's say that I want to make some adjustments to this shape. I'm going to pull just this section out, say OK, refinish the form, and I still have that thin wall body. Because the shell feature was created after the form feature in the timeline, it updates because it's based on its history. 
So again, if you want to continue working with this, make sure you save it to your data panel and continue to play around with the tools. But again, later on, we'll do a specific design series that focuses in on these form or organic type modeling tools.